finally escaped the watchful gaze of your keepers, Hadley. Don't react. You'll only draw attention to yourself. Just carry on as you are and listen. After you left with the Garlean lad, Lucia bade a few of our scouts follow you at a discreet distance. We observed you being led into the station, but decided against venturing inside. When you emerged some time later, and we saw that the twins were sporting Magitek collars, it was clear what had taken place. Now, as quietly as you can, tell me everything. The Legatus himself, eh? Now there's a surprise. This is also the first I've heard of a plan to join forces with the Tenth and storm the Tower of Babel. An interesting development, and perhaps the opportunity we've been waiting for. Our comrades back at the camp also received some rather promising news, but it's still too early to get our hopes up. For now, keeping yourselves out of harm's way comes before all else. Whatever demands the Garleans make, indulge them. With luck, this will all be over soon. Until then. They had not gone far. We searched high and low, but no luck, I'm afraid. I might have guessed you'd be the only one to find anything. I wasn't expecting much to begin with. Eventually, there will be nothing left out here for us to safely salvage. For now, this will have to suffice. We should return to the station. There you are. Heard you'd gone hunting for ceruleum above ground. Brought back a king's ransom? Hardly. But thanks to these three, we have enough to last a little while longer. Well, well. It's not at all as I was expecting, these ones. But for savages, they seem positively docile. It's a poor attempt at humour. In all honesty, I'm grateful for your efforts. But even with another night of warmth, there are those among us who may not live to see the morrow. I trust your expedition was fruitful. Lord Quintus! Use what you procured to refuel the armor. But, sir, what about the heaters for the camp? The time for action is upon us. My men and I have matters to discuss. In the meantime, you are to wait here. Do not forget, you are being watched. The time for action. What did he mean by that? I can only speculate. Clearly something requiring their Magitek, given what we just heard. Whether they plan to utilize it now, or after they join with the Tenth, is another question.
Will they ever escape this cold? Return to and reclaim the idyllic spaces of which Eula spoke? Finished your war, Council? Alphino and Alizea are to stay here, as our prisoners. They will be released once your comrades have relinquished their supplies and withdrawn from Garlean soil. Until our terms are met, they will be detained at a separate location. Everything we've said and done, this is how you treat us. Our allies have but limited supplies. They may stave off cold and starvation for a short while, but what then? For now, For now, keeping yourselves out of harm's way comes before all else. Whatever demands the Garleans make, indulge them. Get them out of here.
This is my home. Our home. At least it was, until that night. I was with Lord Quintus when the capital fell, and thus spared. My family, who did not own a radio, were less fortunate. When dawn came, I made my way here. My parents, my little brother and sister, they were still inside. But they weren't themselves, and they... They tried to. And I had to. I had promised to take them away from the capital that very morning. To somewhere safe, to hide until the fighting stopped. I promised. Garlean flag bears a chain, the bonds between our countrymen. A red link at its center, the blood of the fallen, our loved ones who lived and died for Garlean mold. But if she too fell, who would be left to remember them and their sacrifice? What enduring proof would there be that they were ever here? If we had turned to your gods, would they have saved us? I'm sorry, you forget I spoke. We should go. No use. Believe me, I do not enjoy being here any more than you. But he wanted us to play along, so that is what we will do. Painfully so. Unbearably. I've been thinking about what Quintus said. About why no one would accept Garlean rule. Irreconcilable differences. When coexistence isn't an option, only conquest remains. Varus at Gimlet said much the same. Only by uniting the world beneath a single standard would we rid ourselves of the Asians. United, as one people, one race cleansed of imperfections, a cold and unforgiving vision. And when we fail to live up to their standards, what place is there for us in their world? But the truly sad, truly frustrating thing is how damnably similar it all is to the lofty ideals of Father and the Forum. Non-intervention. Always non-intervention. Protect our knowledge and our people, and to hells with the rest of you. And yet, I can see how it happened. Varys and Father looked to their elders for guidance and took their virtues as their own. But for this world was of their making. In who else could they place their trust? All of us lost in a sea of chaos. Searching desperately for purpose and meaning. But it shouldn't just be an extension of another's. It has to be ours. It has to be. 
We all have a stake in this world. No one should be silenced. I won't deny that we lack the experience of people such as Father or Quintus. Perhaps they've come to see the world as a series of problems, and the most efficient way of solving them, to reduce everything to fundamental forms. A stone is a stone, a cloud a cloud, a flower no more than that. Simple descriptions that strip the subject of distinguishing characteristics. A man is a man, divided according to race, creed or allegiance, and to some, defined by such associations. Is that what you think? In my misbegotten youth. But what I believed wisdom was no more than aggressive ignorance. I've since learned to look beyond the banners and the politics, to see people as individuals with their own hopes and dreams. As for my dream of building a better world, well, every day I'm reminded that it is far more complex than I had ever imagined. But it only spurs me onward, to find the wisdom and the strength to see it through to the very end. All of our supplies and an immediate withdrawal. These are your conditions. Demands. And you forgot about the airship. Once again, you will leave one behind. It will be used to return the prisoners. Their collars will be removed prior to the exchange. So in the end, not even Father's expertly worded rhetoric could deter you from your chosen course. Huh? Not that I thought for a moment that it would. I've no love for violence, of course, but ours is a cause worth fighting for. I just wish you'd realize it too. Sometimes the only way to protect the ones you love is to take a stand. To refuse to suffer in silence. I want you to know I share your conviction. Whether it be on the battlefield or in the debating chamber, I won't back down. I guess what I'm saying is... You've found your own reason to fight. Yes. Yes, I have. God's willing, there will come a day when we can finally lay down our arms and there will be peace. But not until the Telophoroi have been defeated once and for all. And you, brother, will have a vital part to play. By your words and deeds, you'll lead the way. I pray I am up to the task. There'll always be naysayers. Those who think us fools for even trying. It's easy for learned elites to criticize earnest efforts and assert their moral superiority, all without offering alternatives. Not that their sophistry has ever wounded you. So stubborn and strong. Stronger than you even know. Don't ever change, you hear me? If you stumble, I'll be there to catch you. Or give you a thick ear. Maybe both, for good measure. Thank you, Alice.
The scouts have secured Alizé and Alfino. Their collars were removed without complication as well. They report no casualties, not for their party nor the guards who will wake from their premature slumber in due course. It would appear the situation has changed. I propose new terms. We have information that will be of great interest to Lord Quintus, and I wish to speak with him in person. No. In the event you rejected our first proposal, we came prepared with a second. of the First Legion, proud servants of Garlemald, of the fallen Emperor Varys, shall safeguard these lands from the barbarian hordes until our countrymen return! Uh. Stop, both of you! This child may be the worst emissary I've ever seen. We received an urgent communication from the Grand Company of Eorzea. Envoys from the Imperial Army, led by members of the 10th Legion, came to Alamigo and requested an audience. They explained that their efforts to coordinate the reclamation of the capital with the aid of the 4th, 5th, 8th and 12th had ended in failure. Communication between most legions has broken down entirely. Most of the 10th's conscripts have deserted, leaving their forces severely depleted. That is why, unable to continue the fight on their own, they and their allies turned to the Grand Company of Eorzea for aid. Lies! Every word! It is the truth, and I have not finished. The Tenth has requested that we deliver a message to Lord Quintus. Have the ill stand down. You have been listening, my lord? What... what are your orders? Inform her that we will honor the Tenth's decision. Bereft of hope and now dignity. I release you from your duty, all of you. Take solace, your radiance, in the knowledge you are not here to witness our debasement. It was a grand, glorious dream we shared. Of a world united, of peace and prosperity. We are ghosts, you and I, memories of days gone by. Bonds forged in blood that I will not see tarnished.
Quickly! We have to reach the station before it's too late. If there is still a chance that Quintus will agree to a truce, we must take it. I just hope we get there before he and his men do something rash.
Is that all of them? The last of those who agreed to join us, yes. We left heaters and provisions for those who wish to stay behind. They won't last forever, but hopefully they'll last long enough. For now, I think everyone's earned a rest. We'll see to those in need of medical attention, so take the others with you and get yourselves some hot soup. Warmth, at last. Marvellous, isn't it? All thanks to the resourceful machinists of Ishgard, I might add. On their behalf, I bid you warm yourself to your heart's content. Hold on. Your people might have scribbled a few things on a piece of parchment. But it was our laments and smiths that put the bloody things together. Oh, well, be that as it may, we single-handedly got the interior heating up and running again, didn't we? The hells you did! We were there every step of the way! We? You barely raised a finger to help, you ale-sodden reprobate! I did a damn sight more than you, you lily-livered bilge rat. Take that back! Make me. I will not stoop to your level. Here. At ease, man. There's nothing funny in it. I'm from Alamigo, but was a conscript until recently. Used to eat this with the officers. Apparently, it's adapted from a step recipe. This is my first time trying it, and I have to say, it's not half bad. Mmm. It's a bit too flavorful for my liking. <laughs> Perhaps compared to what you're used to.
the little things that make life worth living, don't you think? I know this is not a dream, and yet... I felt the same way at the Dragon Song War's end. Every morning I would step outside and need to be reminded that it wasn't my imagination. That my world had been forever changed. And just as I had grown accustomed to the idea, again, you change my world in ways I never thought possible. Were it not for you and your fellow Scions, the rifts between man and dragon and myriad tribes might never have been bridged. The Grand Company of Eorzea the Ilsabad contingent. We owe it all to you. We've shed many tears in recent days, of pain and sorrow, triumph and joy. I much prefer the latter. Indeed, we can but do our utmost to unite these disparate peoples and lead them to victory. It is a remarkable achievement. Everything that I and the Popularis had hoped for, and more. Would that it had come sooner. Indeed, too many are not here to see it. And yet, there is a warmth in my breast, as if they still share in this moment. Yes, I know what you mean. On a night like tonight, the wind and cold seem to pass me by. Being tempered, the talismans quickly. Save me, brave hero. 
hero. Ahem. My lord has requested your presence, and I would hate to disappoint him. The experiment was a success, but I fear our time is short. I shall begin the preparations. Now, it is time for you to awaken. Good morrow to you. Here, have a taste before it gets cold. Oh, but be sure to remove your helmet. Take a moment, too, to familiarize yourself with that borrowed flesh. So, how does it feel? I, for one, find those first moments within a new body to be most refreshing. We had a Magitech engineer by the name of Aulus to thank for this method of soul extraction and implantation. I believe the two of you met briefly in Alamigo. His was a rather sticky end, wasn't it? Thankfully, he was thoughtful enough to leave behind his mind jack technology. I took the liberty of making some improvements and selecting you as my esteemed test subject. Come now. To us Asians, it is no different from trying on new clothes. Why not make the most of it? by partaking in this fine cuisine. I must say, I have gone to great lengths to reunite you with my lord. When I discovered that his friend was in this neck of the woods, I suggested inviting you over for dinner. He never deigned to respond, but I took his silence as a resounding yes. Daddy is pleased his grumpy little boy has finally found his playmate. Ah, exposition is in order. The Galian Empire has long outlawed all forms of religion. No gods to worship, no risk of summoning. Brilliantly simple. But people being people must turn to something or someone in their hour of need. Who then? Why, his radiance, the Emperor, of course. As you have observed firsthand, Garlemald has seen better days. The legendary Solasos Galvis, dead. Provinces near and far, in open rebellion. Our bold new emperor assassinated. And that last one even sparked a civil war. What rotten luck. The people cried out for salvation. Their earnest pleas, one might even call them prayers, a supplication united for the Empire to reclaim her former glory. And so their will did manifest, channeled through the corpse of none other than Emperor Varus himself. And lo, the Savior was born, the embodiment of the Galian spirit. 
their anima. It calls to its subjects, compelling them to take up arms and fight. And just as the wealth and power gravitate towards the Empire's capital, so too does ether from every corner of the globe. The towers with which you and your allies have been so preoccupied were created as an extension of anima itself. An ingenious design. Would you not agree, my lord? Does the pursuit of prey you have bested before excite you? Of course not. Absent the challenge, the thrill, your prize is a hollow victory. Butchery. Perhaps you think that to be the extent of my promise. I have no doubt fallen in your estimation since Alamigo. Fair enough. But do not let your disdain deprive you, deprive us, of an opportunity to craft an even more majestic moment of euphoria. I have been honing my craft as I set the stage for our reunion. Wheresoever there is suffering and despair, you appear to fulfill your duty as defender of this star. The chaos and destruction that my hordes have wrought are my gifts to you alone. At a loss for words? No matter. As you will learn, I have only just begun. Oh, will you not finish your meal? There is only one thing that can sate my hunger, and it would seem my friend has lost his appetite. I hoped this display of civility might prove an entertaining diversion, but clearly we are above such pretensions. While my lifeless body was in the possession of the Asia, I too claimed another's as my own. It was an enlightening experience to fight in an unfamiliar form. Flaws and failings in my technique were plain to see. Whence rises one's true strength? The flesh? The soul? Perhaps you should like to discover the answer for yourself.
Whatever would happen if my lord were to greet your friends as you? I shudder to imagine what carnage he would wreak. We'd better hurry if we want to avert the bloodbath. You can thank me later for my generosity. Is. Your camp, I believe. If I were to hazard a guess, I would say that you, the other you, is making his way there as we speak. Alas, this you will have to walk from here, or run if you can manage it. My lord would be cross if I made it too easy. Such ingratitude. I'd not squander this fighting chance. After all, you've obstacles enough to overcome. Right on cue. Tempered soldiers, with standing orders to kill those not sworn to anima. Under normal circumstances, you would make short work of them. But on this occasion, the odds are not so heavily stacked in your favor. diminished capacity. Nevertheless, it would perhaps be prudent to keep to the shadows. Scurrying about like a rodent. 